Hello everyone. The concept of a person dying and coming back to life is very common in most mythologies all around the world. We as humans always had an interest in the undead, whether it be zombies, ghouls, vampires, or in this case, Draugrs. Today we will explore the origins of the undead viking warriors in Norse mythology, the history behind them, and what the myths and legends about them meant to the people back then. The origins of Draugrs in history can be traced back to the early Scandinavian saga literature and folktales. The word Draugr literally means undead, and it was popularized in medieval literature, and it was notably well attested in Icelandic saga literature. The myths and legends about them probably started from rumors and fears born from the people's ignorance on death and what was beyond. Nobody knows what happens to people after they die, and that is why myths about the undead are so present in cultures all over the world. These undead viking warriors were usually described as animated, decaying corpses that had great strength and resilience. Indeed, dragons were slain corpses endowed with an evil magic that made them very, very powerful, a strength that far exceeded that of living men. According to popular folk tales, it was said that viking warriors were buried with their weapons and other valuable items when they died. Therefore, when they did come back to life as draugrs, they protected the burial mound and their treasures with all their might. Another interesting fact about draugrs is their ability to increase their size at will, making them much more threatening than your average undead warrior. That power to change size at will was used to justify and express the gargantuan strength of the undead warriors. At times, the dragors in old texts were also said to have supernatural powers, such as the ability to see the past and the future, to shapeshift, to swim through the ground, and in some cases they could even alter the weather at will. They were very dangerous and feared by everyone because of their evil nature and bloodthirst. They didn't just sit there guarding their treasure waiting for a trespasser to attack, they were known to venture outside the burial mound to seek to harm human beings, or livestock, or whatever crossed their path. They would either bring their victims mad, or simply crush them to death with their far superior strength. Archaeological evidence shows that the people back in the Viking Age really worried about the dead coming back to life, and even had to take precautions to prevent them from rising up. That meant that there were certain rituals and practices that had to be done to protect themselves. Usually a pair of open scissors was placed on the dead person's chest, their big toes were tied together to prevent them from walking if they ever came back, Needles were planted in the sole of their feet for the same purpose, and twigs were placed crosswise on the dead as an additional precaution. In some cases, the weapons buried with them were also made to be unusable, to make sure that the dragon couldn't use them. Not that they really needed them though. However, it's believed that the most efficient way to prevent the return of the dead was a corpse door. In this case, the door symbolizes the transition into the afterlife, and it's argued that during the Viking Age, people built doors for the dead of various types, including thresholds to grave mounds, or bricked up openings that could be torn open for the removal of the coffin, and sealed firmly again to deny the dead access to the home. Finally, when it came to deal with the Draugrs and send them back to the dead, although it was considered very difficult, it was not impossible. One of the preferred way to deal with them was to behead the undead warrior and bring the corpse back to its burial mound with a severed head between its legs. That is how Grettir, the hero of the Gredis saga, dealt with one. Then, the remains of the dragon had to be burned to ashes, and the ashes either had to be buried in a remote, secret spot, or thrown in the sea. If this was done properly, it usually meant that the dragon was dealt with for good, and couldn't rise up from the dead anymore. When it comes to myths and legends about them, most of what we know comes from the sagas of Icelanders, particularly the Gretis saga and the Erbigia saga. The Gretis saga tells the story of Gretir, a brave, young and headstrong man who kills a man in a fight and is then outlawed for three years. When he comes back to Iceland, he saves the people from a dragger named Glamr. Glamr was a shepherd that died on Christmas Eve, but who did not rest in peace and instead came back to wreak havoc on the living. After an intense battle with the Draugr, Grettir was able to put him on his back and behead him. In the Erbigia saga, there are a few stories about Draugrs coming back to life to attack the living. There is for example Thorolf Haltfoot, a mighty viking warrior that died and came back as a Draugr, leaving his burial mound to roam around and cause devastation all around him. He was eventually put to rest by his son, Arnkel, who had to use all his strength to force down the undead warrior and then wrapped some cloth around his head to put him down and get him ready for a proper burial. 
Today in our pop culture, draugars are very common when it comes to our modern interpretation of Norse mythology and its creatures. The undead viking warriors appear quite often in literature and even in the cinema. They're also quite popular in the video game industry and appear in titles such as God of War, Skyrim, and Valheim. So this concludes today's video. I hope you liked it and learned a thing or two about draugars, and if you did, please make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. It's always appreciated and helpful. Thanks again for following the channel, and see you all next time.